see it's not on there. Hello, Nate. I'm just playing with this thing, trying to figure all the bells and whistles out. Can you hear me all right? <laughs> okay, so I'll turn it down a little bit. Yeah. Well, maybe I can figure out how to get this thing done now. Y'all not getting an echo now, are you? Hello again, Amy. <laughs> oh, we had three in there a while ago. 
another one run around. I, I was in the room one night and there were four runs in there. Okay, hang on a minute, see if I can screw this thing up again. All right, we'll see if I got it right this time. Okay, did that... I can figure all this stuff out. <laughs> it's getting there anyway. Nate or Amy or somebody come on up here. Oh, there's Nate. Okay. I was just typing in the green room. <laughs> <How's it> going, <laughs> <man>? <laughs> Learning the joys of YouTube, huh? Oh, yeah. Well, it, it just, uh, I've done it a couple of times, but not enough to know how to make the moderator and do all that crap. So I think I figured it out now. So all you have to do for the mo well, okay. So you're working in Streamyard, aren't you? Right yeah, now. Yeah, I got to. I got to go back to. Yeah, YouTube. you got to go back to. You got to go back to the YouTube side, and then because in Streamyard you can't moderate anybody, but on, on the YouTube side, yeah. If you just look at the chat, you'll the the three ellipses. You just right click, and then you can moderate somebody that's in the chat there pretty easily. Yeah, well, I got three or four of them with wrenches now. So, uh, yep, I, I see them turning blue. Michael Ann, Janice, yep. Yeah. They may not want one. <laughs> <I don't. laughs> when, when we start out, you turn people blue and they can ask otherwise, right? There you go. And, and, and some people may not know how to, and I run into that, or they don't have, they're on a phone. And, and well, well, I know, I know that Michael Ann though, and Tracy right. and, and Ron. The, the ones that worry me, Ron, and should worry you are the people that ask for the moderator role. If yeah. they are begging for the moderator role, something isn't right. <laughs> I've learned that. Well, this is like I say, this is just sort of new for me. I'm just getting started on it. Yeah. I'm, what I what I'm going to try to do is run a a uh, live once a week and put one video. A week. Just try to keep that on. Yeah, I'll tell you, even doing that, depending on what else you do, it, it can be a lot. <laughs> you just never yeah. know how much it can. Starting small is good. I like that. 
the the one the last video I put up on that little old dog of mine, uh, I worked on that thing. I couldn't get anything to work. It's been so long since I put one up. Finally yeah. got it all straightened out. It, excuse me. If you want to see, you need to go look at that video and watch that little little old bulldog you talk about wired. It don't look like it's sitting right here, but he's bouncing off the ball. <laughs> I, I do need to check that out. I don't think I've seen it. Now, I just put it up here the other day. And, and, and the funny thing is, Ron, and I'm learning this, it, it's so hard to do it consistently. Depend, like for me, for me at least, depending on my work week or my school week, but putting a video a week or doing a live a week, that that repetitiveness does if, if eventually you start remembering it better, doing it over and over and over. It, it, it is hard to get in that routine though, and to learn it. I it, it's people don't realize it. People don't until re- till you try to do it. People don't realize. Well, you know it. It uh. With the videos, I was trying to add a bunch of stuff in on it, and and that was where I was having problems. I was adding and taking way too much, you know. But and I don't normally I don't edit my videos very seldom. I mean, I'm what you get, right? And it was a little bit different, you know. I know some people spend a jillion hours taking in. And uh, edit in a video, ten or twelve hours to a video. Yeah, <laughs> I not haven't me. done that. But... On me, that's work. Well, even so, even when I started, you know, all I did was the shorts because I had success. And even using simple video or uh, simple editor, it, you know, you you can chop it down and make it better. But eventually, if you're doing one specific thing, when you take the video, you just kind of learn when to turn it on, when to turn it off with, with the shorts. Uh, you can't do that with full video. So for my yeah. first six months, it was just a matter of, oh, this kind of works. Okay, people like this. It's too long. They like an eight-second video, blah, blah, blah. But I, I, I love it, Ron. You, you I, I really appreciate that you're... Uh, trying this i know we talked a while back and and I, that you're sticking to it and i think people are going to enjoy you live i i really do you're i don't even have to tell you you're you you just people you're somebody that people will love well i i get along with most people and i think people sort of like a smart ass <laughs> you're you're fun <laughs> you don't you're fun, but you don't take nonsense. You're, you're just straight to the point. I, I think people will like having having that option, especially if you're doing it late night. I know Dee mentioned it on my live. Having people on YouTube helps people. Like, there's been a lot of times having somebody live, no, you know, you just never know. But having somebody live that they can come in and talk to, I, I don't share a lot of stories on that, but there there are people you will not realize that you help them by doing it. <laughs> well, you know, that's one thing about YouTube. Uh, it, it it helps a lot more people than I think folks realize, especially in this crap where they're buckled into the house. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Tracy, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, be ca- I see that comment. Be careful, because I didn't yeah. know. I, I didn't know when I started what I was gonna end up doing. <laughs> well, my deal is I'm spastic. Now, you know, y'all sort of got a a little bit of a uh, guidance on where you're headed with your YouTube. And mine are not really going to be doing it because I've got like that airboat I've got built and I'm finishing up. And then I've got the wood kayaks and the river trips and, and RVs and stuff. And then I've got like a camp over camper that I'm going to try to bring out to quartzite 
I built it from the ground up. Jeez. You know, and, and I just like to do that kind of stuff. That, that translate, like, that will translate those videos to YouTube. That, that's, something the, that's something I don't have. I don't have that expertise. I, I've almost become a dog travel entertainment channel. I, I very rarely will try to say, here's how to do something because I don't feel I, I, my, my, my knowledge and stuff is a very special niche that is nobody on YouTube wants to hear about, but building stuff, how to fix stuff. Absolutely. I mean, but, and that's something I enjoy. Just like a knife I had up on. Mm -hmm. <coughs> I, I got, I had a friend of mine that, we were talking one night, and he said, Ronnie, I was in the steel business all my life. And he said, why haven't you built some knives? Said, you know about heat tempering and, and you do anything with a piece of iron? I, said, I don't know. So a few days later, I thought, you know, I'm going to build one. And I picked the file up, hammered it out, and, uh, and built one up. Well, then I got to enjoy building one. Like that one I showed, it's got native mesquite wood for handle, and uh, it's, it's out of knife. And I carry one every day. It, uh, I've lost a grip in my fingertips, some problems I've got. And if I have to open a pack of crackers or something like that, I can't do it. But that knife can do it. I got where I carry one 24 7. Right. And uh, it, uh, but I built about 35 of them. I kept four and put the rest on the internet. I had sold them in two weeks. You know, I got a hundred bucks a piece for them. That wasn't a whole lot, but, and I had made one cent. Isn't it, Do what? It, it isn't a hundred dollars for a knife a lot. Oh no. Uh, I was going to say, I guess I don't know. I don't buy, I, I, I probably, I, I think I bought one when I went on the road. It's around here somewhere, but. A I good custom for a, knife for a personally built knife with how much you put into that. Yeah, I guess. Well, it it uh, I can build a knife the way I'm building those in about eight, eight, nine hours. So, oh, you know, that's not really, okay, and that's not really, but now you go with a fancy handle on it, like a cactus handle or something like that, and some exotic steel. I've seen them sell from 250 to a thousand dollars. Depends on how good. Wow, that's awesome. So, yeah. so Amy, Amy was telling me. I thought I was catching your first live. Amy said you've done another practice live or something. So how yeah. how's it going? I, I I know I sent you that video, and is everything feeling comfortable? You're kind of learning how to do it. Do you have any questions while I'm up here? No, it. it just, I couldn't get the get the mod deal because I was trying to do it on the stream yard side. Yep. And so I got that figured out. And then I was opening the broadcast up on the the uh, stream yard side. And when I did, I didn't know where to go to find it on the YouTube side. You know, because I, I hadn't done anything on YouTube. Well, I figured that one out. Well, and so it, it just it's just finding that stuff. Like I say, more good. Uh, hey, yeah, you know. and it, it's more practice until you you will still. Heck, but you've seen me. I I don't claim to be professional at this at, by any means. I still am like I'm an amateur. But. I'm I'm, do, I'm doing it for fun. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, in, in, in the stream yard, in in the YouTube, that's probably the the weirdest thing. Looking at the YouTube, where you can see people, like even when I'm watching you, I've got it over here. If I'm up here, so I can watch the comments. But over here, where I'm talking to you, it's old blade, but it's the actual conversation. That 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 is probably what is the weirdest thing about it to me. Because so I can look over yeah. here, and well, somebody will say. I'll wait for the next comment. Somebody type a comment. <laughs> Say, Nate, your door. John S., is, is, am Tracy, I getting an echo again Tracy to you? Said, Tracy just said okay. So I saw it over on or YouTube, and I 
Oh, no, I, I do see it over here. Well, what? Nate, you're well, I opened, it. I opened it up over there. That That's actually, they're on your stream, they're coming in almost at the same time. Really? That's, that's good. That's, that's, yeah, I've not seen that, but I guess I don't. <laughs> Heck, half the time, you, you guys know me, half the time I'm 20 minutes behind on chat anyways, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> I, I make it sound like I know this stuff, but I'm always 20 minutes behind. What do I know? Well, I, I tell you what, this is it's a lot easier when somebody comes up than yeah. it is. You know, you run a lot of yours just on your own. Well, if, if I'm showing somebody how to do something, I'll probably do that. But it's a whole lot easier when somebody's up there. I don't see how Paula does like she does. And, and you know, no, Mike, you just... I, I said, and uh, I sort of beat off other people. Yeah. Oh, oh, you you are absolutely true, especially when you start. I I don't even know. Like, I wish I really do prefer having somebody else up. That's why when I started, I always had a co-host. You had a sounding board. Somebody can talk while you're trying to figure something out. Um, On the road, it becomes a lot different. Is what I found because, and I still remember when I, it, the one that kind of hit me hard was when I had Mo Bang for Your Buck, Tim Tim. We we're going to talk about food and M21, and I didn't have the signal to handle it. And I don't even know if I had enough signal to handle it by my on my own. But when you get into those, as, as a nomad, when you get into those areas that don't have a strong signal, you may very well not have enough signal you may your only choice may be able to handle a live on your own you may not have the upload and download and that's where it becomes really tricky and for me i i i've gotten hesitant i would love to schedule people to do co-hosts and stuff but when i don't know if my internet's going to be good enough i am hesitant to schedule things and whatnot yeah it it I don't know that I'm going to schedule a time on this. I'm, I'm just going to sort of do it at my convenience. And the other thing is this time of the year, there's people that are leaving and they've got a hole there or I may fill in something like that. You know, if I get enough people. One of Hello, Victoria. How you doing? Hey, Vicky. Hey, everybody in chat, I should say. I'm yeah, sorry. I've been, just... I've been talking so much in live streams tonight. I'm a little bit worn out, but I saw you up. <laughs> <in my time. laughs> I, yeah, I was talking 100 miles an hour earlier. Well, you know, this thing here, I've, I've got some friends that are really nice about coming in when I come up on each other. And uh, yeah. the, they, you know, Tracy and Janice and John and Victoria, Michael Ann, and they, uh, they've all been great on that, putting up with my BS you know, and, uh, and learning. That's yeah, what well, like. yeah I, you know what? When I started, I never wanted to do lives. People don't believe me. I, I keep saying it. Nobody believes me. I am shy and quiet. <laughs> you guys just don't see it. But I really am. I really am. Uh, and, and there so, are, I mean. I'll go ahead. Yeah. Excuse me. Oh, no, that's fine. But, yeah, when I started, and, and I thought I was going to do a practice stream yard at 2.30 in the morning. Nobody would see it. I'd pop up. I'd press some buttons. And Amy was one of them. Johnny was another. And I had five people in there in the first couple minutes. And, you know, they were helping me out. And of course, oh, I, I forget what my big air was. I think, oh, one of them was I started it in Facebook. Or not Facebook, sorry. I, sorry, my mind, I am getting late for my mind. But <laughs> I, I, I am tired. I, I, was, I, I started it in YouTube instead of StreamYard. And so everybody was trying to help me how to pull up a comment or how to add somebody. And I was just in the wrong software. 
and and they spent 30 minutes with me and we finally figured it out so in the middle of the like more than the middle of the night so yeah everybody everybody is amazing like that but you know the name you just about how amazing people learn that i'm sort of like you nate it, and you probably won't believe that i'm pretty quiet when i first get around me and uh, then then the more i get to know them the bigger idiot i get to be you know <laughs> it, it uh or feel people out and you know yeah. you get feeling for people some people you can cut up and joke with and some people you can't right and, uh, Nearly, every, nearly everybody on here you can cut up and go on with. But. Well, yeah. Yeah, we, we get to know each other well and whether somebody can take a joke or not. I mean, he, I, I was even on on uh, Amy's live when, when I when I called Nomok and he did, he on, on our live tonight, or my live tonight, he came on and did his little roast that I didn't know he was going to do. And, and he just had that little, he's like, I know Nate, I've met him. It, it should be fine and i'm laughing we're having a good time but he still he still called and was like i just want to make sure that that was okay i was like <laughs> yeah <laughs> i mean sometimes when i mean you know you really go out and have fun but you and you do it and you don't want to tell them it, because it, it's better that way but you still have that little bit so i mean yeah we we get to know each other on here and what people tolerate or what people want to hear or you know various different things and it's, it's an important part i i don't always do it perfectly by any means i probably have pissed a lot of people off i'm sure <laughs> but, <laughs> but you know you know when to do it where you can do it um different channels i mean if it's family friendly you just learn it yeah yeah that's right and we don't i like to cut up and go on and it's funnier to hint at something than it is to say it. You know, <laughs> I, I mean, you don't, you can just spit it out and it's so rough that it's not funny. Right. But you can insinuate something or, you know, and it's funny then. Right. And Janice is saying, Ron, quiet? I don't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> well, at times now <laughs> there, there there's a whole a whole group we could create of the agitators <laughs> oh yeah oh me and janice and you get nailed pretty <laughs> hard in here paul oh, was yeah. going nuts the other night on that naughty or knife dude. I oh, got oh, so oh yeah 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 when we jumped up, I was like, you, you, you have too many people that are coming up as nice. So I'm going to have to jump up and give you some, something. To something to no, Because <laughs> nobody wants to, you know, everybody's really nice. Nobody wants to vote people as naughty, I guess. Unless, unless it's like you or me and everybody knows it, it's okay. Go ahead. We go down that road. We know it. <laughs> Well, it, it's like my first wife told me one time, said something about being a dirty old man. I said, hell, I was a dirty young man, so why change now? <laughs> <laughs> you know. uh, the age wasn't the criteria, huh? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> You're going, Victoria. Okay, gal. Appreciate you coming in. Janice is saying, hey, Nate, you are not excused either. You act like butter. Wouldn't melt in your mouth, but. <laughs> Wait, <that> means... <laughs> what am I? I'm an angel. I'm an angel. I don't know what she's talking now, about. Now, wait a minute. That's pushing things a little too damn far. I, that, 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 that's <laughs> pictures of me with wings. <laughs> Yeah, I got some wings too, but all the feathers were blown off of them. <laughs> I tell you what, I got tickled at Paula the other night about though when she was talking, and I said, "Yeah, said something about a foreigner." She didn't know what to say for a minute. 
You, you know, the funny thing, and, and I guess I thought, so so she had an invite for my live tonight for any time because I thought she'd be traveling. I know she's been stuck. And I think D, somebody asked DJ if she was on the road and she wasn't. So I was kind of hoping she'd pop up just to say hi for a few minutes. So I wasn't real, I was like, well, she's got the link. Maybe she hit the road, but DJ said she hasn't. So I don't, I don't know. But then again, maybe with everything going on, maybe she just didn't want to come on, which which I would understand too. But yeah, she might be down in the dump because she didn't get yeah. the last out of here, and maybe not want to talk. I get that way sometimes. Where I don't want to talk to anybody, right? You know, I, yeah, I think I, we all do. I I thought about messaging her earlier in the day, but I didn't want to pressure her to be like, "Hey, can you come on my life?" You know that sort of thing, and she's worrying about this other stuff. So ho hopefully. Uh, hopefully she gets it sorted out. I think it, if she's not on the road, which it doesn't sound like she is, it, hopefully she can be the next few days. But, they must have had a hell of a storm up there. Yeah, well, cold. I mean, the cold will do it. I mean, you freeze everything. I Living in South Dakota, Nebraska, even Iowa, even, there's times where everything just freezes and it's hard to start a car at times. I mean, having a, a if you don't have a garage, you 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 notice it, and then when you get a garage at your house, you it, it's very nice. But Janice is saying you're an you are an agitator, Nate. No, no, <laughs> that darn <laughs> halo will slip around your neck and choke you. I don't I don't know I don't know what you're talking about, Janice. <laughs> you tell me I didn't have a halo. That that was a damn hula hoop. I didn't. I, well, I never had the hula hoop. That was Travis. <laughs> oh, they popped her right now. Come back again. And, and yeah, Janice, I, that was the last I saw was she was trying to find a space heater to heat up her engine. So I'm guess I, I'm, I'm it's freezing up there. It, it was getting down to freezing here. On the oh. Gulf of Texas. So whatever's blowing across, it's probably about the center of the the continent, yeah, it's it's not it's not friendly. It's cold. This is coldest weather we've had in a while here in the low twenties, getting up to 40, 50 in the daytime. Not hurt anything. Yeah, it was it was cold today. Well, it was eighty three here yesterday, and it was twenty four last night. That's a good spread. <laughs> <laughs> you're further south than I am right now because I'm in Beaufort and it was 85 and it dropped to 33. I think it's supposed to drop to like 31 or 32. Where are you at? Beaufort, Beaufort Texas. I'm on the very eastern edge of Texas right now. You're around Orange, Beaumont, down at Beaumont. Is that where Beaumont. you're at? That's oh okay. I said Beaufort, <laughs> Beaumont, Beaufort. Where was that? From? Beaumont. I apologize. Yeah, I I've got to wait. I I told you I'm tired. I, that people don't believe me. Doing the live streams wear me out. My my mind goes in for two hours. So I apologize. But uh, so well, I've got a couple things now. So I've got the generator. Obviously, I'm not going to test it out at a state park. You can't run them. Um, but my 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 power station. I had a very cheap one. Basically, I could I bought it so that I could do mobile um, live streams if I wanted, and I've tested that out, but it crapped out. So I've had to. They don't stock them in stores, so I ordered it, and I'm wait. I have to wait here. For it to get to the Home Depot. So I'm stuck here till that comes. And then today, if you were watching Amy's, Pippa ate my thermostat. Yeah. <laughs> Which is my back. Like normally I just run this little space heater. But my backup to heat is the thermostat through the propane. So I'm just like, well, boondocking. The, the propane boondocking is a lot more efficient, right? Because you don't have to take up your battery that you're saving up for everything else. I don't have that now. 
so so people i mean if they're not boondockers and whatnot don't realize that thermostat going today that was a pretty big deal and it i mean it's not i've looked at it it's not something she bit through a cord that's clearly important it's gone so now all i've got is a space heater obviously we've got the suv too but I mean, I'm not going to freeze to death. We, we're we not in... I've lived in the winter or up in the Midwest. I'm not going to freeze to death, but it, it kind of sucked that that happened. But. And I, let me give you a little piece of advice. Watch that damn spacey. Your yeah. plugs and your RV are rated at 15 out. And most of those space eaters are like 1800 or what you know. And got a friend of mine, an electrician. He said, man, in the wintertime, I'm replacing them plugs continually because I need a 20 out plug in there instead of a 15. So- well, and that, I, I, I've, I've heard similar, I, I don't understand the exact science or electronics to it, but I've heard similar cautions. So anytime I leave the trailer, well, first of all, the dogs aren't going to freeze. The nah. dogs, there, there's, so every time I leave the trailer, that space heater goes off. I, I don't want to fire when I'm not here or whatever. Um, at night, because where I sleep, if there was a fire or something, it, I'm not at a place where I could get out easily because I'm up in the corner on a top bunk. So I turn it very low. So like like when I was talking on Amy's, when I woke up this morning, it was 50 degrees. That's because I have it very low. And, and yeah. it's by reason. Um, so yeah, I, I, I try to I, I try to watch it. But I always I, I will always appreciate every warning anybody gives me. <laughs> yeah, well I burned I burned the bugs up on my trailer here. Burned two of them. And uh, like that and I had a eighteen hundred watt heater. And so the next time I went bought a out of six hundred watt I can't overstress it there. Of course, I run my propane, but I'm, I guess I'm a little different. I like to sleep cold. And uh, even at 24 last night, right before I went to bed, well, I cut all the heat off. And uh, then I'll get up in the morning and turn it on. It, uh, right, yeah. Normally, I don't heat with sleep you, with you any know, last, heat. Last night when it dropped down to 50, I was still in shorts. I did have a hoodie on. I was still in shorts and I didn't have socks on and I just had a uh, probably a medium blanket. So I do have heavier blankets that if if it comes to it, I, I, that's why I say I, I'm. It, it's not risking anything. We'll be fine. It's more of a pain in the butt. And, and, I'll tell and, you a couple of things that work real well if you're plugged in. It's just a damn old uh, heating pad. Throw a heating pad up underneath them and you buy them for nothing there. And the other thing, if you've seen hunting, I get these little heat packs. Little hand warmers. Yep. I, I'll buy a carton of them things and I'll leave them in the trailer. Really yep. cold. You you can pop two or three of them and throw them up in that sleeping bag. And time, you know, if it's 20 minutes before you get in, man, it's toasty. Right. That's a good idea. And, you know, that way, too, if all your heat did go out, there wouldn't be any big deal. Right. Yeah. I, you know what? This is all new to me. I, I, the, I, I, when I started it, it was like I wanted to back up to the back up to the back up. And, and so right now, the, I mean, what happened today was my backup basically went out. It, it is a pretty important backup, but. Well, it's, that's not much. Right. Yeah, it, it, like, yeah. It, for, for my mom or my grandma, if they somehow found their way to your live stream, I don't know how they do it. Yeah, we're fine. <laughs> <laughs> do what now? No, my, my, my mom and my mom and my grandma, you know, they. I never even it when I started YouTube, they they're not really. First of all, they don't really like social media, and they're not very uh, technically savvy. 
with computers. Well, they eventually realized I was doing YouTube and, and it was a good way to keep up with where I'm at and all of this. Cause I go, go live all the time and they can follow me and make sure I'm okay. And next thing I know is they, they, they're on Paula's live, even though they won't say hi, but, but they've learned like, well, if he doesn't go live, go to this live. And yeah. <laughs> if he's okay, he'll be talking in there, even if it's not something I want to hear. <laughs> so, so they've kind of learned. I don't know, you know, I don't know. It, it when, I first, <laughs> when I first got on live, I was dating a little girl. And uh, I said, I a live stream on that thing. She got on it. You know, I cut up gold every And she got madder than hell about it. I plumb jealous. I said, well, it's, it's really easy to cure that. Just turn the damn thing off. You know? yeah, <laughs> and yeah. was, I thought it was hilarious. And, so, and yeah. Sean is now saying hi to my mom and grandma. <laughs> I, uh, I, I really doubt they have found you yet because you're just starting on lies. <laughs> yeah. Oh. No, they, 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 you know, I, I typically do have, I don't have a live. I do. I, I do actually. I, I do have a live routine a lot of the times, like Wednesdays. I have a set schedule. Uh, I'm a moderator on most of them where I go here, here, here. And maybe, for better or worse, maybe I should switch it up a little bit more. But Or or Paula on Saturday nights. That's where I like to hang out. You know? And, and so they've kind of figured that out. Uh, well, I like to hang out with Paula, especially on Saturday night. We've had a blast in there. I mean, yeah. Just that deal she was talking about with uh, DJ. Well, <laughs> if, now, you got, now that you was that, that was on DJ's. If you're talking about yeah. the same one I'm thinking of, that was on DJ's live. <laughs> yeah. Well, there were three of them though. If you go back and look, there's three lives on that. Oh, first, well, right. Yeah, they kept coming up because it was so funny. Yeah. The, the first one was DJ with a piece of paper, you know. And the second one was when I was going to go on business with DJ. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you remember? <laughs> and then the third one was when V got into the act. And V can be just funny as heck now. She wants Who? to be. She's V. Brie? Call me V. Oh, oh yeah, V. I, I was hearing Bree at first. I was like, Bree got into that? Yeah. No, please, Bree wasn't please. in on that one, I don't think. <laughs> but uh, I know Janice was. Yeah, it, it, it was. Yeah, we've had. I mean, it, it, it's weird because a lot of the time, what I've noticed, there, there'll be times that I really I work hard trying to put something really nice together. And it's very planned. And then there's other times you don't plan anything in. You just go with it, and something hilarious happens because it's the natural flow. Yeah. And, and that's what Paula does really well. Is she really does? Yeah, she full of it. I mean, she's she's got the knack to cut up and go on, you know, and, and sort of keep it under control, but let it get out of control a little bit. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, yeah. Well, and she knows like, she knows a lot of us, and a lot of us know her at this point. So we, yeah. we've been doing it for a while. We know when to pull back. I've learned, like, there's night, like, like I, I've been there enough, and I'm sure you're the same way, Ron, where you can kind of read her. Yeah. Where there's a night you can push it, and there's a night maybe you don't. And yeah. She may We're not, all like that. Yeah, she probably doesn't even have to say it, and, and you just respect that because we all care about each other. But Janice has her tail between her legs. Sorry, yeah, I'm guilty too. Boy, it's hard to let that one go. <laughs> well, tell you, Ron, I, I, I'm going to jump down because I've been doing so many of these tonight and I'm kind of worn out. And I, I want to come up, but obviously support you, uh, answer any I questions. I appreciate it. It, being up on screen, people don't realize that they don't believe me. I am quiet and shy. It does kind of wear me out. So I, I got to take the rest of the night. I, I said that to Amy too. And then I saw you pop up. I was like, no, I better go off and say <laughs> hi. 
But I, I'm gonna jump well, off. Maybe somebody can else can jump up and say hi. Not not Amy. Amy, you don't have a voice. You rest your she voice. Just, I knew. <laughs> I knew she was not feeling well. Yeah, I, so uh, a lot of us jumped up on there too. So that, that, that's the cool thing about this community is people help each other out. So, anyways, Ron, I'm gonna jump off. You have a wonderful night. You you let me know if you have any questions, sir. And we'll all right, see appreciate you. it, man. We're gonna see you soon, man. I look forward to it. Somebody else want to come up? <laughs> yeah, I know they did, Amy. That was that was sort of what was funny. I, I don't think Nate even knew what he was getting into. I think that's the funniest live I've ever seen. You know, Janice, you were talking about that space heater. Paula was wanting to try to warm that motor up. I've got a friend of mine that's a bush pilot in Alaska. And uh, he was telling me one day, he said, you know, when they're flying up there in the wintertime, when they land them planes, they drain all the oil out of them. Because in a few minutes, that oil is taking up so much the plane won't start. And he, he was telling me that there's more airplanes burn up in uh, Alaska, from them that all get too thick, they build a fire on the nose, try to warm it up, make it too damn hot, get the plane on fire. <coughs> well, what are you having, Ron? <laughs> oh, little raw ground, huh? I don't drink whiskey much. I don't drink a mixed drink. I don't drink much of anything. I used to, I drank like I thought they was going to run out of it. I don't know. I just got full. I got where I didn't care for it. Now I have maybe four or five drinks. Oh, excuse me. Yeah. <laughs> I tell you what, y'all hang on for just a second. I need to run do something, and I'll be right back. I tell you the favorite place I like to have a drink. We got this river that we fish out here. And 
we'll pull up there and camp and on a big sandbar and build a big fire. And uh, I don't mind a couple of drinks around that campfire. But I've got one of my favorite drink is one they call a salty dog. Just name. I like them better than anything else right now. Excuse me. Ron, what you been up to, man? I haven't seen much of you lately. <laughs> Everybody's got their preference. If I drop a link, will somebody else come up here? Oh, look here. That is in that bottle. I didn't even see her. I'm sorry, Hi. man. I finished my dinner, so I thought I'd come up and, and uh, give you a hand. No, I need all the help I can get. Uh, no, not if it's related to um, StreamYard or anything like that, Ron. I'm, don't look at me. I haven't got a clue. But, uh, yeah, no, just to keep the party rolling for you. Um, yeah, I thought I'd I finished my dinner, so I thought I'd pop up and say hello. Well, yeah. How's everything going for you? Ah, oh, I've been busy today. I've uh, stripped out. I'm, I'm working through the house. I'm stripping out a room and, um, you know, doing a thorough clean, back and dusting, polishing, washing, and uh, trying to get it all back together again. And, and I've done, what, three loads of laundry, dishes. Yeah, so, oh, yeah, I've been keeping myself busy today. In between damn live streams, yeah, I keep getting caught up in live streams and I'm sort of walking backwards and forwards or I'm dragging the laptop from one one place to the other and then I'd have to bring it back and put it on power again. <laughs> Good Lord. Yeah, yeah. So, no, but I've been keep, keeping busy and, um, yeah, just it's been too hot until just the last... Yesterday wasn't so bad, um, but today has been quite quite mild. It's still warm, of course, but, um, I mean, I've done three loads of washing. It's still out in the line. I've got to go and get them. I'd but, rather it be hot than cold. I do not like cold. No, nor do I. I hibernate in winter. I, yeah, I'm quite happy not to go anywhere. But um, summertime's a different kettle of fish. Yeah. Yeah, the blood gets a bit thinner and you feel like moving. <laughs> I don't think, thank God. Uh, that I, I don't know. I've gained a lot of weight. I feel a lot. I've gained some weight from what I used to be. And, and the cold doesn't hurt me as bad since I've gained that weight. I just don't like it. It just, I don't want to do anything when it's cold and wet. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, yeah, no. Um, after I had the heart attack a couple of years ago, well, three, three years ago now. And, um, yeah, and I've been on blood thinners. Yeah, my skin's like damn tissue paper and you <laughs> really feel the cold. Oh. Yeah. They mm, like so. I got sick one time and they thought I had a stroke. And uh, I didn't have. And they gave me that damn clot buster and then put me on a bunch of blood centers. They like to kill me. I could just touch my arm and I go to bed. Finally, they got yeah. me off all that mess. Yeah, no, well, the first the first lot um, uh, that they – I had one stent put in. And, um, yeah, the, the first lot of uh, round tablets they gave me um, – I thought, I, yeah, I felt like I was having another heart attack. And uh, 
you got an ambulance ride into hospital and uh, you put on the table and they did another uh, uh, angiogram and um, no, it wasn't having a heart attack and it was having a damn reaction to the tablets. And uh, they tried to get blood out of my arm and it was just jelly in the syringe. Yeah. Mm. So, uh, yeah, they pumped me full of heparin because then I bled, bled like a stuck pig. But, um, yeah, so they, between the the uh, cardiologist at the hospital and my cardiologist, they took me off two of the tablets. And, uh, yeah, so I'm only on um, oh, just a, a cardia now, which is a low-dose aspirin. And, um, yeah, just a, a beta blocker for the heart um, and a cholesterol tablet. But, yeah, everything's everything's 100% now. And um, even after the heart attack, my heart has actually improved. Yeah, what fortunately was only minimal damage. Yeah, mind you, my GP, I could have sued the mongrel. Um, yeah, he didn't believe that. I'd, I walked over to his surgery from home and... Uh, he didn't believe I'd had a heart attack, uh, he, he, so he just gave me antibiotics. But um, no, I followed it through and took myself to the hospital, and sure enough, yep. Yeah. You're lucky that you realised what was going on. Yeah, you know? we'll see. On my dad's side's all heart-related issues, and uh, yeah, on my mum's side, it's cancer, so my chances are it's either one or the other or a bloody big truck, so yeah. <laughs> yeah. They are. No. But no, you just make each day a winner, Ron. You know, it's funny what our bodies do. And if if we listen to them, you do pretty good. Yeah. But like, like on heart attack, if the younger you are, you're more likely to have a heart attack that you don't even know you have it. Mm. And the younger you are when you have a heart attack, the less chance you've got of making it. Oh, it's weird, but the older you get, the better your chances you get mm. on a heart attack. Well, I, I had no pain. Um, all I had was, well, coughing, um, but like a burning sensation in the esophagus. And, um, but, yeah, cough, coughing, laying down and, and cough, 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 cough. And a really deep retching coughs, and of course this burning in the esophagus. But um, that was effectively all I had. I had no, you know, like jarring pain or, or um, you know, numbness or whatever sensation down the arm or anything like that. Um, yeah, it was just that. But I, you know, I knew just things were definitely because my heart. I could feel my heart rate increased and and what have you. But um, yeah, it's, you know, it's just something that you, is always in the back of your mind, especially, of course, having a history, family history of it too. So, yeah, but um, no, well, I'm, I'm, I'd, only just turn, I'd only just turn 61. And, uh, yeah, when that if you have a, If you have a heart attack around 40, that's the worst time to have one. Oh, of course, yeah. And most, most of the, you know, like you'll see, you know, these fitness fanatics and, um, you know, and they, their bodies are really in tune and yet they can drop with a heart attack as well. Yeah, probably more frequently. And, you know, generally they're not, you know, up in age bracket either, but it's not uncommon. I've, I've lost three or four friends of mine that were around 40. You know, mm. And, uh, you know, I'm pretty, you think they were in good shape. And just when that young, it uh, it's it, I don't even think about a heart attack that young. It's, yeah, well, I it, think it, I, I think my grandfather on my father's side, um, I think he was only in, he was in his mid fifties, I think, when he dropped dead with heart, and um, he he died before my mum and dad were married, and. Uh, yeah, and then of course, Dad, Dad, um, he was. I oh know. I think Dad was in his fifties too when he had the heart. He ended up having open heart surgery, and they said he'd get ten years out of that. Well, he did. 
Oh, no, he must have been 63 because he got 10 years out of his open heart surgery. And, um, yeah, he, uh, yeah, they said he'd, he'd get 10 years. Well, he did almost to the day. <laughs> but, um, yeah, oh, if you had a way to go, go like he did, he went to bed, went to sleep, didn't wake up. Yeah, yeah, that was the way to go. Well, I'll tell you what, ain't none of us will get out of the world alive. So, you know, mm. yeah, ain't no use worrying about it too much. Take no, re no. Re no, reasonable yeah. care of yourself. And yeah, yeah, you just got to make every day a winner and um, you just get on with the business of living. Yeah. Damn, I hate to hear that, Ron. Hey, uh, that too. Well, they passed away, mm. and one of his buddies passed away. No, that's no good. Yeah, you know, and of course. Well, that's, what, that's one thing I learned when I was in combat is that if, when you first get into it, it scares the hell out of it, and after a while, uh, being dead, you're dead. Now, it always scared me to lose an arm or a leg or something like that. But um, you, you get where you got a different attitude on it. Yeah, yeah. I yeah, mean, no, uh, with, with um, you know, like a disability or something like that, certainly it's a hell of a shock, you know, um, to the system and things like that. But there is so much around um, that you know, that can get you through or get you beyond the, the um, you know, the inability to do stuff. Um, and, you know, so many prosthetics and, and things like that, you can continue on, you know, with some form of quality of life. But, you know, if you're dead, you're dead. And you're dead a damn long time. Yeah, so, that's right. Yeah, yeah. So... But uh, no, nah, just you just that's my philosophy is is you make each day a winner, regardless of your health, you know, or, or you keep your attitude, you know, as high as you possibly can. Make each day a winner and just get on with the business of living. That's yep. Right. Yep. Well, well, of course, you, you know. can have a lot of fun on the way. All, all that much better. <laughs> <laughs> my my best friend at high school was. He got to be five years old. He got cancer in one eye. Went to both eyes. He was completely blind. But he had seen things when he was young. You know. And he taught me a lot. That boy, I've seen him ride a bicycle down that highway. He could tell the difference between the gravel on the shoulder and and the regular road, you know, where the cars came. And he'd hear the cars coming. You, you couldn't tell that boy was blind. I mean, yeah. he... He'd come to my house. He'd say, carry me to the house for a minute. I'd carry him to the house, show him where everything was. And hell, he'd be running through there 15 yeah. minutes. Yeah. And, uh, but he taught me right quick that, you know, you can overcome just about any of that thing. Mm. He was cool. He was a cool guy. Yeah. I used, well, I it's... used, we were teenagers and, you know, teenage boys. And, uh, I used to get so damn ticked at him. He'd walk up and we'd be talking to some girls, you know, and he'd reach out and go to the feeling of their face and, and uh, be talking to them. He'd wind up feeling of their boobs before he was over with, you know. We'd walk off and he'd say, I bet you can't get by with that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I know. I know here. I mean, I was born and raised to have to up and leave home. They all up and left me. So I've been here by myself since I was 18. But, um, you know, it's it's familiarity. You know, you turn pitch black at night time and that I can walk through, well, I mean, my hallway is 90 feet long. I can walk from one end of the house to the other and around and in the dark and not hit a thing. I know where everything is in its place. I mean, my eyesight's all right. But... Um, yeah, it's it's just it's imprinted in your brain. 
And yep. as as your friend said, you know, just show him around, and he, he identified where everything was, and he could navigate perfectly after that. So that boy could play a piano, tune a piano, uh, he, or I mean, he and do it all by ear. You yeah, know, well, they that's, they they say you lose one sense, your others become heightened, and uh, yeah, well, that doesn't surprise me in the least. Hello. Oh, I thought he'd gotten the wrong chat there for a minute or something. I think Kenny got a porn video channel out there that he goes to every once in a while. He's always <laughs> talking about being in the wrong damn chat. Yeah, 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 he must do. Uh, Either that or Kenny's ears are so sweet that we frighten the daylights out of him. But, <laughs> uh, just let your tongue slap your brain, Kenny. You'll be all right. <laughs> I, I'm looking forward to meet Kenny out court though. Yeah. Oh, you guys are going to have a ball. Yeah. Oh. yeah that's, well, that, I don't know yeah. if we'll get it done or not, but there's four of us from Texas I know going. And that's Ron is. And... Uh, then or Ron Z and uh, uh, then Travis Dream on Wheel they're going and I'm going and uh, then Nate's going Nate's in, in Louisiana now but he's headed that way so I don't know we may some, we may hook up going out there I don't know uh, people travel at different speeds well, uh -oh. as long as, as you all arrive at the same destination, from what I can gather, that quartzite area um, <sighs> that where all the camping sites are, they're everywhere. So you're going to, from what from what I've sort of been able to piece together, it's going to be fun trying to find one another initially. Well, that's what I ask them, and yeah. um, you know they're they're talking about using email to find each other. But I've been out there. Before. Damn, you got 25, 30 miles of that desert out there. Yeah. You know, it just, uh, hello, Miss C Dub. Yeah. Just, 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 keep, just keep your gear on in the magic circle, Ron. That's, that's the only advice I've gleaned out of all of it. <laughs> and, and don't go riding any bikes without any gear on. <laughs> well, C Dub, I met her. Uh, Hi, C Dub. That Lola Palooza, she was up there. I met her in Frugal and uh, Madge, and I met a bunch of them up there at that one little shindig I went to. <laughs> she does trouble too. She she gets you in trouble. Uh, I, I I I don't think we could get into as much trouble as we have been to to date, Ron. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> Every, everywhere we go, everyone sort of comes <laughs> and, and waits for it. <laughs> no. I, I laughed one day. I asked Paul, I said, how come you don't ever have me up there with you? He said, I don't trust you. <laughs> that I don't never know what's going to come out of your mouth. Yeah, yeah. yeah well, don't worry. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I think I'm on that list too. Yeah, I think me and you and Nate are, are pretty well on that list. Yeah, but we take over chat. It's good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's that's the trouble. I think. Yeah, they uh, they they mod me, and it, it, they're trying to curb my uh, activities, but it's just not quite working. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, Paul, Paul, it, Paul it took her. Uh, her mod off back off me, so I'm cut. I'm going to cut loose again now. Yeah, once she gets going. <laughs> See, Dub, is it cold out there? She's in it in quartzite or Yuma or someplace out in. Yeah. It gets, it, it gets cool out there at night, but oh no doubt, the deserts usually do. Yeah. Mm. And you know, the, I I don't know what sort of temperatures it'd get down to, Ron. But I know here in the, you know, in the 
open areas, uh, you know, desert areas or whatever, um, even in, uh, you know, sort of warmer weather. Overnight, you, you know, like if you've got, um, you know, your, your lines from your propane to your um, stove or whatever, yeah, the, the, the propane can freeze in the lines, so you've got to cover them to stop them from freezing. And, oh. and, uh, and not only that too, um, from what I understand uh, out at Quartzsite, is something about big rats or, I mean, I don't know whether they are rats or whatever the hell they are, but um, they'll be looking for warmth as well. So, you know, and you've got to be careful of them. Yeah. It was, you better be glad you're out there, see, Dub. It was 24 here last night. Mm -hmm. It usually yeah. get out and freezing out there, but not you too bad. So, yeah. yeah. I kind of, no, yeah, it's, yeah, because coming from a, you know, a warmer climate, I can't imagine this, those sort of temperatures that, you know, that your, your, areas in you know in either the states and certainly in canada get to it's that just blows my mind now this mm. is really cold for texas i mm. mean it's it, it's it's not unusual where c dub lived is about 200 miles north of me and uh do what I don't understand, Michael. Ann. Oh, uh, that was at Quartzsite. Yeah, there's some, some, and Paula was going on about it too. That you've got to have lights or sensors underneath your vehicles, you know, to try and prevent them from, yeah, getting into your vehicle and chewing the daylights out of it. I, when I was out there four years ago, I didn't have any trouble, but maybe I was just lucky. But C, C Dub lived about 200 miles north of me. And so it, it's probably two or three degrees colder up there tonight than it is here. I bet it's down in maybe 20, 19. We're talking degrees, too. Yeah, yeah, I gather that, yeah. 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 Hey, C-Dub, yeah. did, you, did you look at my channel? Did you see my new puppy? I saw it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, uh, you stick throwing. Yeah, you, you tug a ball with a stick. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he's, a, he's a hound, but yeah. you know he he goes from full blast to laying down and just sacking out and oh, being yeah. sweet. Yeah, but they, they, yeah, that's puppy too. You know, they're all exuberance, and then yeah, the next minute they're flatting their back snoring. Yeah. I don't think he's gonna get out of it. He's six months old now, and he should be slowing down a little bit. No, no, really, generally, you know, up until they're about two, they're still pretty exuberant. Hmm. He, he keeps me happy. busy. My last dog was a little Yorkie, and he was yeah. like 14, 15 years old. And uh, he was, you know, he had slowed down a whole lot. And he never was real fast. And, uh, but I, I, when I got this dog, I wanted a, a little Boston Terrier because they are feisty. They're bouncy, buddy. If I got, I got one in that one. I think he turbocharged or something. Lord. Yeah, we used to have Labradors because um, the property we had up, up the country and that had water frontage. And of course, Labradors just love the water. But um, they used to make us laugh. Uh, Dad, Dad pulled down the fence there at one stage. He was refencing the property. We backed onto a dairy property. So the the, the farmer next door, he, he put the potty calves uh, in the paddock where, you know, where we had the fence down. Well, the dam labs and the pot, there was about 20 potty calves and um, the dam labs and, and the potty calves would play chasey. And... The, the, the calves would go, he, they'd chase the dogs. Well, the damn dogs, uh, they'd be running around, around, around the house, in you know, like the, in the, the, yeah, the property area. You know, if you step foot out the back door, you nearly got killed in the stampede. There were 20 potty calves after them. 
And of course, then they disappear out into the paddock and they were all exhausted. They'd lay down for five minutes. The potty calves would lick the dogs to death and then it was off. The dogs were after them. So, and then they'd bring them all back again and around and around and around the house. That would go on all day until Dad got that damn fence up. Yeah. <laughs> I used to build a lot of feedlots and stuff like that. And when I was in that business, uh, we build up pens and shoots and all that bit. And a, a calf is curious as hell. I mean, young young cattle, you'd be welling over in one corner of that pen, and you'd look up, and they'd all be standing there watching you. You know, fifty head mm-hmm. of cattle just standing there watching you. And mm-hmm. when you got when you got through uh, welling, and you turn around and walk off, that piece of iron be red hot. Every damn calf there walk up and lick it. And then a road did it. They'd go to bucking and pitching and it was a red hot, you know, and had to burn their yeah. tongue. Yeah. And there'd be another one right behind him licking it. They, they'd lick it still until it cooled off. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, they're curious. Yeah. Yeah. One yeah. day a, a bobcat came through one of those set The pins would hold 300 heads. And uh, they were huge. But a bobcat came through there. And there was like 15 of these pins in the road. And I heard them cattle raising sand, and I looked, and way down on the other end, in one of those pens, all them cattle all of a sudden ran from one side of the pen to the other. And then got in that pen, and they all ran to the other side, just like dominoes coming up to there. And it was a little old bobcat got in the pen with them cattle, and them cattle were chasing him. And they run him from one end of that thing to the other. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. didn't know what to do. Yeah, no, well, well, of course, you know, the potty calves, they're only, you know, they, they've been weaned from their mothers, but, um, you know, they're still only young calves, effectively. So it was just hilarious to watch oh, the, yeah. the interaction between the dogs and the, they were, they were literally playing with one another. Yeah. yeah. And um, Billy, the, the farmer in the adjoining property, he could do nothing but laugh. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, oh, we've had had many a stories up there. In the middle of the night, you could hear this somebody screaming out for help, and uh, her Dad got up and uh, to go out and explore who was who was yelling out for help. And it was Billy out in the the paddock. One of his cows were were, were carving, and uh, Billy was only you know he turned side on, stick his tongue out, he'd look like a zip. You know he was only a little bloke, and um, Anyway, so Dad's gone out, and between the pair of them, they dragged the calf out. And <laughs> yeah. but I mean, we weren't we we didn't have um, you know our our property wasn't a farm. You know, we've uh, had no farming experience in that. So yeah, Dad certainly had his eyes open that that particular night. But um, um, eh. I used to have a stallion that I raised from a colt. And I had a big boxer dog, and those two would play like it. that. Dog would chase that stallion, nipping at his heels, and that stallion be kicking, raising sand. And I've seen that stallion reach up and catch that dog by the back of the neck, and just pick him up, walk around. With him. Yeah. And when they got tired of playing, that old horse would be standing there, and that boxer would get up underneath him in the shade. Yeah. It'd sit like that, you know, for two hours. Yeah. Yeah, but best of mates. Yeah. It, 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 that horse, he'd rear up, go to pawing and raise the sand. You know, when he was a stud horse, he, they can be mean. Mm. But if he'd ever hit that dog, it'd probably hurt him pretty good. But he never touched him. You know? Yeah. Just, yeah. They just put the show on. Animals are funny. Yeah, yeah. C-Dub, yeah, are y'all um, having a good time out there? They, uh, and what part of the country are y'all in? Are y'all close to Yuma or are y'all closer to Quartzsite? Or... I'm going to have to try to find them when I get out there. <sighs> I needed to ask Nate a while ago. I know he's got one of those wee boos. I'm going to ask him how it ain't working for him. Think about buying one. Like yeah, I think I think also um, uh, Kevin from the Nomok 
experience just recently bought one too so yeah. Okay, yeah 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 i don't know much about them ron i mean yeah. that, i haven't heard anybody really talk bad about them but there's just a couple of things i'm curious about well you know i i, I don't know what you um unless you're gonna you know have satellite or or um, something like that you're going to find spotty places, you know, throughout um, the, the countryside and no amount of boosting or anything is going to really make that much difference. And particularly if you're, as Nate was saying earlier, with the bandwidth, uh, you know, if you've got low signal, well, you, you're not going to have much opportunity to, yeah. To well, they, well, they claim on that we boost that... Uh... Okay, y'all over in California right now. Okay. So they claim on that we boost that if you got one bar and it'll boost it to three or four bars on you on that we boost. I would imagine and I, I mean I'm only guessing from your perspective too, but I would imagine you your carrier. Um, I know here in Australia, I mean we've got several carriers that We've only virtually one of them um, gives a greater coverage Australia wide. And I mean, for us, it's Telstra. Um, but your other big player in the game is, is Optus, which is, um, I believe, is English. And, um, but all the rest of them, it seems to be that once you get out of like a, a city hub, um, you know, out, out beyond, um, they're useless. You know, you may as well turn the damn phones off. But um, with the exception of uh, of um, Telstra and and Optus, they seem to have the you know the wider general cover. So I would imagine that it would be something similar with you guys over there as well. And from what I've you know just sort of been hearing for different ones, it seems that um, is it Verizon. Um, seems to have a, a more consistent cover. Um, yeah, so I think your carrier um, would play a big part in it too. So, Well, I've got Verizon. Yeah. That, I think that's what got the best cover nationwide. But then I've also got a at and hotspot that I'll just put a few gigs on. And uh, there's places that if you get at and you can't get Verizon. Hmm. No, there, there are spots that, like where I deer hunted this last year, and uh, riding would work at and And uh, you're never going to have to, if I was to the point I was traveling all the time, I think I'd probably have a wee boost, and I'd probably have unlimited with riding and, and uh, at and both. Yeah, see, that that's sort of um, thought uh, it just wouldn't apply here because it's, you know, like not to have both um, it, it, because of the cost factor. You know, nothing's cheap. I no, think here I think I, I got in on a special plan on Verizon. They just ran it for two or three months, and it, it's really unlimited. It's not most of those unlimited plans. They give you 15 gigs or 20 gigs, and then they throttle you. Well, mine is wide open. I, I do anything I want to do with it. Now, AT and T would, but it uh, those two I think pretty well covers the United States. Ninety percent of the places. There's some places that just don't like in the mountains. Uh, you know, you just there's places yeah. you're just not gonna get it. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Well, I think here, um, my um. Uh, internet is, um, I think it's, it was 500 gig, but I think they've made that unlimited now. But um, with that, um, and of course your speed, your speed alters. I mean, I, mine's only just the, the basic. Um, but with my mobile plan, well, that's uh, a 40 Forty dollar plan, but that only gets the mobile um, phone only gets five gig of data. 
and uh, which suits me fine because I never use a damn thing anyway. But, um, uh, yeah, but collectively and for the landline, landline internet and mobile phone, I pay $130 a month. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, my, my laptop it goes, you know, 18, 20 hours a day just about. And, well, uh, yeah, I'm on the internet, so. That's about like I am. I've got on Verizon, I think, $70, and uh, my telephone's about 70 bucks. I've got unlimited data on it, too. So I can use it like a hot spot. But yeah. I pay about 140 a month, something like that. Yeah. But yeah. I don't I don't watch television anymore. No, well, I, there's not enough hours in the day. Between you guys and, you know, I'm up until all hours of the night and then when I get to sleep, I wake up, turn the internet, uh, the laptop goes back on again and I've still got about nine or ten shows queued that I've, I've got to get through or work out, you know, or come back to later. Yeah, and trying to find time to, to get around and do the things that I should be doing and hence they all snowball on me and, yeah. <laughs> Any wonder, any wonder I work like a, a dog today trying to get stuff done. But that was only one room, and I've got quite a few more to go yet. Then anyway. Yeah. All right, Ron. Well, look, I'll, I'll step down, see if somebody else wants to come up for you. Oh, we got plenty. We got plenty of room up here. Don't run off unless you got to go. No, no, no. I'm, I'm not going anywhere. I'm, other than I've, I've got to nick out before it gets dark and get my clothes off the line, but you got time yet. It's only uh, just after half past six here, PM. Yeah, mm. not, not going to wait too much longer. I'm going to get off here. It's going to be two yeah, o'clock here. Yeah. Oh, it doesn't, it doesn't get dark here until about nine, uh, you know, this time of the year. Yeah, so yeah, we're, we're, we're doing well. I'm just taking you for a walk at the minute, uh, just putting a few things away. Well, I appreciate you coming up here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, when Nate, uh, you know, I mean, I was quite happy with Nate coming up and chatting to you simply because he's got, you know, a, a knowledge of, of, you know, what you're doing and how to go about it, which I certainly yeah. don't and I won't claim to. But um, well, when, when I think, Nate... I when think Nate I've sort of got it, got it figured out now. Yeah. It, uh, yeah. <laughs> but it just takes, I, I got, I, I didn't have StreamYard open a while ago and I couldn't get it to open up on this channel. And that's the reason I couldn't sign out of it. It, uh, I could sign out on the StreamYard side, but I couldn't on the YouTube side. So. Huh. Yeah, yeah, no, well, don't, I don't know. Don't know any of that. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'll learn. I'm, I'm going to start. Like I say, I want to try to run at least one live a week, and uh, I want to post at least one video, and I'm going to see what that does. Yeah. Of course, I don't do a lot of editing on my video. Oh, well, that'll come in time anyway, Ron. You know, as you get more confident with what you're doing and you're, nav you know, learning to navigate yourself around it. You'll well, get you know, I, I know a lot of the YouTube channels I've watched, uh, I mean, having cinema quality videos is nice, but that's not what I watch the channels for. Most of the time, it's either personality or whatever yeah. they're working on or whatever they're doing. Yeah. And uh, I think that that's probably what I'm gonna go with. I want that one on that video I put out on that dog. The worst video I've ever made. <laughs> it uh, I couldn't get anything to work on. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, no, uh, no, look, it, it, I, I imagine that it's all a learning curve and, you know, like I, I'm quite happy to, to, to sit back and, um, you know, let others, others do all the production work and stuff like that. And I'll certainly, you know, join the community, um, but I'm happy to stay in chat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, yeah, like anything beyond that, you know, like all this videoing and, and stuff like that. Well, 
I mean, I'd, I'd have to outlay a lot of money just even to set up with the basics. And I, I'm, just, I'm just not going to do that. And, um, and it costs I, really, me. I really haven't spent that much um, because I use a, I wound up with a good phone that had a good camera on it. And then I bought a cheap action camera like the GoPro. I don't think I'll ever own a GoPro as much trouble as they have. But you, you can buy one of them little action cameras for anywhere from 40 bucks up, you know, and yeah. take a pretty good picture. That was a, that, that video on that little dog was off one of them little $40 action cameras. Yeah. And, yeah. Oh, it wasn't too bad. Yeah. Oh, God, my 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 iPhone that I've got now, um, it spends its life sitting on the kitchen table, plugged in, you know, keeping the power to it. But um, I mean, that's that's a a five C, you know. So that's how antiquated it is. But it does me fine. I mean, it was only ever I only ever bought the damn thing for, you know, because well, prior COVID and that, you know, I'd do long trips in the car and uh yeah and it was just a safety factor more so than anything and you know just so somebody could keep in touch knew where i was but um you know and I, like I, I looked at upgrading the phone to even just like an iphone 10 but here they're over 1200 dollars you know and and that wasn't at the iphone 10 pro that was just the basic iphone 10 and i thought no way yeah so, you know, let alone adding all the other add-ons, you know, microphones and cameras and bits and pieces. No, forget it. No, I'm I'm quite happy to throw in my two bobs worth from chat. <laughs> well, I'm I'll never be a channel with a hundred thousand members and all that mess. And I'm not even worried about that. But I, I would like to build a channel up where I had a yeah. couple thousand subs. Here. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, um, I don't know whether you, you know, you as you're moving along and that, um, as you said, with your hobbies, you like to build things and things like that. But there's also, from my perspective, I mean, I've got absolutely no idea of your, what your surrounds are like, um, where you live. You know, maybe, you know, like you, you take your pup out for the day, whether you head down to a river or or out into the, out into the hills or whatever. Take your camera with you and, yeah, take your camera with you and do some shots and, yeah, things like that. Too, yeah, because I I, I, in, it's been my experience, um, you know, from listening and watching what's in the chat and that, that people people are curious as to see how the other other person lives. So, yeah. It, well, I sort of do that on the countryside off the motorcycle. Yeah. You know, I got, got that motorcycle with that sidecar. That little yeah. puppy, puppy, he gets in that sidecar and he just rides up the storm. It don't yeah, bother was, him a bit. I was watching him, yeah, hiding from you or, or playing with you on that go, uh, that golf cart thing you know, that you had. Yeah, <laughs> he was in and out of that like a flash. Yeah, yeah. well, that so, golf um, cart, he, think, he thinks he owns it. Yeah, yeah, I'm not surprised he takes to the, uh, the sidecar. Yeah, yeah it's when I first cranked that Harley up, it's a little loud, and he sort of backed up a little bit. But at 30 seconds, he was all right. He's sitting up in there just watching the world go by, you know. I think he's going to be all right. I've got a kennel. Well, if you watched any of them other videos that had my other little dog on the back of the motorcycle, uh, it's a padded kennel that's got two leashes in the bottom to where they can't jump out. You know, if they take an, they Ooh. want to jump, they can't. And so I'll, I'll put him in there. Yeah, see how he goes. Yeah, yeah. I, I think you know it, it would be advantageous to at least keep him strapped down in some format so that. Oh yeah, know, I, I would take take yeah. the chance on. No, 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 and especially I'm, especially being a young dog, you know, they can get excitable over. Something similar, you know, some, some like a, a somebody's with with their dog hanging out in the car opposite or something like that, and all of a sudden you're off like a Bondi tram trying to catch him. Yeah. But, um, yeah. Yeah. No, but certainly for safety's sake, I'd keep him strapped down on a short leash for, um, 
you know, until until you're confident that. You know, well, these safe. kennels are made for yeah. for that, or, yeah. or a dog to ride on a motorcycle or a golf cart or whatever. Yeah. Hey, yeah that yeah, golf yeah. cart, I'll just stick one finger through his collar, and I can handle him in that golf cart, you know. But yeah. on a motorcycle, he's either behind me or beside me. Yeah. And, uh, but I really enjoyed that little old dog. I think he's going to be good. Oh, they're good fun. Yeah. They're good he's, fun. He's a mess. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't. I don't know how many people we've still got in here. No, it doesn't. It looks like a C Dub's journey and you and me. <laughs> and yeah, yeah, that looks it, about it. Yeah, got Everyone seven. Bailed. Going seven watching. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, Kenny. Kenny's probably fallen asleep. <laughs> well, Michael Ann may have, in fact, even fallen asleep too. Yeah, yeah let's so, get, get, like I say, it's getting pretty late. Yeah, yeah. I, I think I'll probably shut it down too. Yeah, fair enough, Ron. Yeah. But anyway, look, it's all a learning curve. Go at your own pace. But there's lots of people out in that community that will um, spend their time with you and help you through. So you'll be fine. Oh, yeah, I think so. I think it's going to be all right. Yeah, but, yeah. So, yeah. And my voice is enough different too that people sort of recognize that, and uh, that'll help a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you'll be there. Oh, and plus, you know, the community will get behind you as well, and you know, they'll all all help you out with subbing and and all the bits and pieces. So well, go with it. So you'll be right. You know. Me and you and Nate are pretty well known on a lot of these lives. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, not necessarily for the good reasons. <laughs> but, oh, oh, well. Uh, uh, yeah, a laugh and a smile is cheap, Ron. So, I mean, if we, if, if we can provide that, well, we're doing a good job. Yep, that's right. Yep. And and that's all, that's all I'm interested in. Yep. Uh, yep. Having a good time with it. Yeah. I do. Yeah. I, I do a little, not counseling, but trying to help out vets that have tried to commit suicide or talk yeah. about it or having trouble. And so I, I deal with them a little bit. And I know how important it is for somebody to be able to, you know, maybe come into a chat like this and just bullshit with some people. And, hmm. uh, you know, because they get worse. A lot of them boys with that PTSD, they won't get out of the house. Yeah. So yeah. this gives them a way to way to do some contact. And that's a pet peeve of mine is that uh, out of the veteran community in the United States, there's on an average of 22 vets a day. Yeah. Yeah. So I've heard. Yeah. So, and that's, that's yeah. a ton of damn people in a year. That's right. I watched the um, uh, Adventures with Purpose, um, and they've they've retrieved what sixteen to date cold, uh, cold missing persons um, that are contained in a vehicle underwater. That's that's what they do. They search and recovery for that. Yeah. And yes, well, yeah. In the last what two years. Um, yeah, they've retrieved now and, and closed 16 cold cases. And a lot of those, uh, well, not a lot, but uh, quite a few of them um, have been uh, return vets. And, uh, and of course, there's been a, a few that have been suicide and, of course, the balance, of course, being accident, road accident. But... Uh, yeah, yeah, I believe the numbers are, are astronomical. Honestly, I've got no idea what they are here. I would imagine they they'd be up there too, because our yeah. boys are, are you know have, have stood shoulder to shoulder with you guys, pretty much in every damn war that's been. Mm. Well, you know the Australians and Americans have always pretty well fought side by side. Yeah, 
Ja, yeah, altså set inden. Ja. Ja, Vietnam, WW1, WW2, and Korea. Ja, yeah, ja, yeah, nej. No. Yeah. Yeah, we've, we've all had our fair share. Mm. I was, was stationed when I was overseas and in that combat area. We had a compound, and on one side of that compound was Aussie in their compound, and on the other side of that of us was Korean, South Koreans, rock. Mm. And uh, so you had a... It was so funny just to see the difference in it. You know, we saw each other every day. And something else. The difference in heat, heat people. I, I love y'all's accent, and I love y'all's country down there. When I came out of the service, if my parents, and I, I already owned half a business, and, it, and my parents lived in the States, you know. But if it hadn't been for that, I'd have been back down in Australia. I like that country down there. Yeah. And at that time, they were paying Americans pretty damn good to come down there and work. Yep, yep. The, uh, well, uh, you know, even now, um, uh, like the exchange rate, uh, I think it's something like about, we only get, um, uh, you get about a dollar, a dollar thirty something to our, one dollar here so yeah we're looking at i think it's 71 cents 71 something cents on your you one us dollar is what we're getting at the moment but yet when i was over um in the us in 2015 14 15 or 14 i can't remember i, I actually made i was getting at one dollar ten australian to your one dollar, so <laughs> I actually made money on that. But um, Love I, what, cat. what what I find amazing though um, is people's knowledge of Australia. Is everyone thinks that we have a kangaroo or a koala as a pet? <laughs> well, we don't. Um, and not only that, they think that we're only a small place. You know, they'll come out for a you know they'll, they'll as a tourist for, you know, a week or something or other, well, God, they're going to be lucky to get to wherever they landed. They're going to be lucky if they get to the outskirts of the city proper yeah. in that time. Um, but in land area alone, Australia is not that far behind the all of the U.S. in land area. Yeah. No, it, it, it's yeah. really close. I mean, yeah. y'all society... You know why Aussies and, and Americans get along so well is <coughs> the Australians sort of got their start from the debtors' prisons and all that kind of stuff. They they brought them over and kicked them off of ships, and if they could swim, that's fine. If they couldn't, well, that was fine. But And then Texas, everybody that was an outlaw in the United States or an outlaw in Mexico came to Texas. So we, we both got a real individualist outlaw type society. I mean, it it uh it's really real similar. Yeah, well I think um oh, historically for Australia, um certainly the, the, the population ex was expanded by the the Brits offloading all the so supposed criminals. I mean, God, you stole a loaf of bread over there. You got transported to Australia, yeah. you know, and that was that was just trying to feed your family. But um, you know, uh, but uh, I th it wasn't most of the most of the poor people that were actually transported weren't criminals, mm. you know, not in the true sense of the word. Um, they were just desperate desperate, struggling, try, just trying to keep alive and keep their families alive. And it's been of that nature, I think, and that created the um, the attitude of the Australians, I think, that, you know, that we we always stand, um, we'll, we'll, we'll all stand up for the underdog and, and stand shoulder to shoulder 
and and fight with them and but that's it's that's i think and of course the tyranny of distance here um you know it's it was a case i have to you know you 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 had to to struggle to survive and <coughs> yeah and of course they still do you know like farming here and uh is is so hit and miss because Australia is a land of droughts, fires and floods. And you know, our our extreme range in temperatures and and of course uh the the geographical landscapes. I mean most of our population is around the peripheral of the of the country. Um because inland are deserts and you know arid, dry Expanses of places that that range, depending on how far north you go, um, from the tropics down to you know to subarid uh, desert forms, and then you come down further south, and you're getting into the more climate areas, which are um, you know sort of they they say Melbourne weather. You know, if you don't like the Melbourne weather at the moment, just wait a moment because they reckon we get four seasons in one day. Um, but you've got to put it in perspective too. The Melbourne um, is closer to the Antarctic, whereas our northern reaches are closer to the equator. And so, but, and because of our size, you know, we cover that vast area, and of course, geographical changes, you know, that go with it, from yeah, rainforests through to deserts. Queensland blew my mind. Yeah. It's so different mm. than, than the parts of Australia I'd been in. The, the reason I got down to Australia, when I was in high school, my best friend was an exchange student from Australia. And he came over here and went to high school. And some American went over there. And we really got to be close. When mm. I got in the service then, I got a chance a couple of times to go to Australia. And then a couple of times I've been down there on my own. Well, his dad owned a, what do they call them, station? They don't call them ranches down there. They call them stations. Yeah. Uh, it was like 400 miles inland to, to get to where his dad station was. Yeah. And uh, everything that they got was in land trains. You know, they drove that 400 miles on a dirt road. And they hauled everything in and hauled yeah. all the wool out. We and, actually uh, call them road trains. Yeah. Road train. Yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a big prime mover that'll pull, um, you know, umpteen, uh, umpteen um, pity backs on behind it. That, you know, they could they could have about 20, 20 um, what do you call them? Um, not containers, but you know the trailers and right. yeah, yeah, and uh, yeah, they call them road trains. And yeah, they yeah they'll, they'll move everything and and that but they keep they keep you know sort of inland and the outreaches they keep them alive because they're yeah. transporting all the time. Everything they got had to be flown in or come in by those land trains. That's right. Yeah. But yep. you talk about Australia now, Texas, and a lot of people don't know this. When the Texas on the United States. They gave a bunch of land to a bunch of different states, mm -hmm. and used to you get you could get in Texas and ride all the way to within four hundred miles of Canada, up in Montana, and that was still Texas up that high. Yeah. It near, nearly cut the United States half in two. Either that but, or the San Andreas fault will. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hello, Tim. How you doing, Bubba? Yeah. Hi, Tim. Tim. They, uh, but most people think Texas is just like it is now. But uh, yeah. Albuquerque and and uh, several big towns going up to there, Col Colorado and, and Kansas. That was all part of part of Texas. And there's a place in Montana I've been there before, and it's a uh, Name of it, Texas Canyon, big old big canyon, and there's a 
little old sign there on the side of the road that said, this is the first capital of Texas. Now, that was in Montana. <laughs> and yeah. That's like 16, 1700 miles from here. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, well, originally, um, you know, we, we virtually only had, um, well, wh white population, um, only inhabited virtually uh, the Sydney area, Batemans Bay. And, um, and then it wasn't until uh, later than uh, sometime after that that uh, they actually moved around and, you know, sort of moved into Victoria and and of course Tassie was a Tasmania was the penal colony, and uh, yeah, but the rest of the the country then they sort of moved out into the western districts of Victoria, and you know like with white settlers, um, and started with the uh, you know whether it was cattle grazing, um, mostly it was sheep initially, and then. Uh, yeah, they, then they started to do their explorations and a lot of um, the inland explorations were done with camel and the, they had the Afghani camel drivers and so that's why we've still got camel here. Um, yeah, and, and yeah, then, the, then of course, you know, there was a um, navigation by sea and, um, yeah, well, I, I guess it's still debated whether it was the Portuguese who were here first or, or that um, the Captain Cook discovered it. So, I mean, there's still an argument over that. But, um, yeah, and, you know, I mean, but that, that, that's probably not dissimilar to, to um, the migrations across your country as well, you know, with the... the, um, uh, the Farmers, or, or you know, the, like the the wag, the horse drawn wagons, and yeah, div, you know, divining out into the into the wide blue open, and uh, in in hopes of finding better lands for and setting up, you know, their homesteads and moving the cattle and what have you with them, and and of course a lot perished. Well, the same here. Yeah, Michael Ann, we appreciate you coming in. It, it, it's pretty interesting, uh, yeah. the par parallels between Texas and Yeah, you know, and of course, we're a lot younger than you, too, um, you know, population-wise. Um, you know, I mean, we're, what, 1770 was was basically our start time. Um, and uh, our, yeah, like, 315 yeah, million. Yeah, yeah. Oh, well, our population, I think, I, I don't know what our current is. It's only about the 26, 26 million, give or take, yeah, here. And as I said, most of them are, are you know, situated around the, the coastal areas. And that that was the same thing in the United States. Hmm. The, the coast, the, that was what was settled first, was California yeah. and the yeah. coast of Louisiana. And well, it's an, it's an access thing, you know, it's... Yeah. Well, and, and that, we had a little bit different deal in it all. Most of y'all's dealings were with the English, weren't they? In Pre yeah, yeah, predominantly. And, and, Although and, I can claim I'm not from, I'm not from convict stop. I'm actually five-generation Australian, but um, my, my original settlers out were out here as free settlers. Well, mm. like in, in, the, in the U.S., you had France. Settled like Louisiana and parts of Texas, yeah, and then the you had the English with the Boston Tea Party, and yeah, and then yeah. you had the Spanish in Mexico, uh, in Mexico and mm -hmm. uh, Florida. They settled that, and yeah. uh, there were there were four major world powers that settled in the United States, mm -hmm. and uh, it it so it made a real diverse mixing pot. In place of New Orleans and the Mississippi, that was a big seaport. Well, there were every kind of nationality you could dream of. All the sailors coming in, and stuff, you know, and it was probably the biggest mixing pot in the United States. Yeah, you yeah, well, we're a melting pot here too. Yeah, from you know, very cosmopolitan, from 
people from all all walks of life and nations and and what have you as well. Wasn't so initially, but certainly is now. Which, mind you, you know, I've got no problems with it because it's built the country and the diversification that we have here is is staggering, really. But um, we, we pick up all the Asians. Um, I think we've got the, I think in Melbourne alone, I think we've got the biggest Greek population outside of Greece um, here, um, the big populations of Italian. And in more recent times, um, you know, with the, the war-torn areas and that with with um, also uh, a lot of Afghanis um, and other um, Arabic countries, um, we've had uh, a lot of English, a lot of English here initially. Um, a lot of them went home, and I don't know why. <laughs> 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 I don't. I think we can still hear them whining, but. Um, yeah, no, but uh, you know it's but it, it, each culture, and of course, a lot of the Chinese with the gold rush um, that we had back in the eighteen fifties, um, the big gold rushes here, and and that brought a lot of a lot of um, travellers, you know, to to strike it rich from all walks of life. Same as what you did up in you know in Alaska and places like that with the gold rushes and over there, it's been the same sort of thing. Yeah, you know, people to try and their luck coming in from everywhere. Uh, in fact, that's what I, that's what brought my progeny here from from Ireland was to to try their luck at uh, with the you know with the gold rush. That was um, a whole lot of money. Mm. That got the United States explored because most of the population in the east and uh, then the Spanish population right in California, but then they started hitting gold. And, and one of the biggest gold strikes in the United States was in North Carolina. You don't think about that being a gold place, but no. they would hit the gold strikes, and then people would move in, and you know, they, and they were steady just moving west until they stopped in California. And uh, they did a lot more exploring. I think the only thing that's really different between y'all's culture and our uh, Native American Indian, there were so many different tribes of Indians in the United States that it was it was pretty diversified. And, uh, well, we had various tribes with our Aboriginals as well. Um, uh, uh, various tribes. Uh, not that I know a lot about the culture, but. They, they also, had, they, I mean, they were have always been nomadic, and they would, you know, go. But they, they stick, they stuck with their paths that they, they followed. But I, I believe that, you know, there, there was used to be quite a lot of tribal issues between some of them as well. But um, I think, you know, I, I don't think that that's um, solely, you know. Um, the same, uh, you know, as I, I, I don't think perhaps ours were as aggressive as the um, American Indians, but, but I, I'm not okay. I, I really can't speak about it because I don't know that much about it. Yeah, well, they, had, <laughs> they had they had the many different tribes, it wasn't even funny, and some yeah. of them were like the Cherokees. I'm part Cherokee, and I've done a little studying on them. They had their own language, and they had a written language, and uh, they were really bad. And mm. uh, but people think about them being in Oklahoma, the center part of the United States. That wasn't where they came from. They came from the East Coast, and uh, they the uh, U.S. government moved them to Oklahoma. It's pretty interesting. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Without a doubt. Um, but it's it's in the scheme of things, it's not different, not really different from one culture to the next. I mean, you take Europe and the the proximity from you know from one country to the next. Um, you know, they're they're virtually on one another's doorsteps, and yet they can be vastly different 
from one another, again, in language, um, uh, but their, their mannerisms, their, their upbringing is, can be vastly different from literally the man next door to them, you know, that's, that's in a different country. Um, it's just that, you know, we, we live on, a, on greater plains um, as, uh, as far as distance is concerned. Uh, and that tends to isolate everyone more so, and hence they evolve, um, you know, their, their own, um, it's not the right word, but personalities um, indicative to their environments that they're in. It's the same here. Again, the tyranny of distance. And, yeah, it's, but, I mean, I don't think that's, that's any different anywhere really. Um it's just proximity that sure that come on us, up, Kenny. Yeah, it makes us all the same or different in our own. We've all like we were talking the other day, um uh, somebody was um to bear the different interpretations of words. Um well, between me and 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 yourselves over there. You know, like I, I think I I forget who I who where it came up, but uh, I was telling somebody about yeah I, that uh, when I arrived over in America, over in into uh, the East Coast there, yeah, that I was going to be taken out shagging for the night. <laughs> and I nearly freaked, and I couldn't do anything but laugh because shagging to me certainly wasn't dancing, which I later found out that's what it was. <laughs> and I, 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 I and just. Yeah, it, it's just coming to coming to grips with uh, the the difference in in terms was it, I, I find it amazing and I just love it absolutely love it I thrive on it and the different like your your twang that you have as a Texan uh, and I, I felt well I wasn't and wasn't so much in Texas only in transit but. Um, when I got to North Carolina and South Carolina and, and Virginia, the difference in the drawl from one oh, place to the next was just just had me floored. But well, uh, I, I'll tell I, I you, like I, yeah. tell you like I told Paula, I don't have an accent. I just talk slow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, well, you certainly do. Yeah. And, I mean, but... The same for, for people over there with me. You know, they thought I was English. Hi, Kenny. Hey. Um, they thought I was English. And I said, no, I'm not a pommy. I'm Australian. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I used to get in trouble. I'd be talking to some people from New Zealand, and you'd call somebody from New Zealand and also you're somebody from Australia or New Zealand or or you could get chewed out right quick. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, actually, um, New Zealand uh, was a, 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 a vast um, stopping ground for a lot of English people um, that settled there. But, um, and of course, then you got the Maoris, you know, the traditional uh, owners of the, of, the, of the land there. I mean, they were headhunters, for God's sake. <laughs> yeah. Traditionally. Yeah, and I mean they are—they <coughs> were a, a warlike nation. Uh, yeah, with the—I don't know whether they're they're Polynesian. I think. Um, yeah. Kenny, so, Ken, yeah. Kenny, what are you doing, man? Oh, not much. I just got off a of Love's Use panel. I—I—I <laughs> I, I was over on Love's You and. Uh, She's been having internet issues and signal issues over there in the Philippines. And um, she's still without electricity at her place, but she's got uh, electricity at her, at her sister's place. And But, um, but yeah, um, I just got off a good panel with, with uh, Loves You, so... But I, well, I was still supporting you at the same time. While yeah. <laughs> yeah. I see you found. I see you figured out how to make moderators. Yeah, I finally figured it yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, 
But yeah. then I I got lost and I had to shut yeah. everything and down. Start over. Long, <laughs> but I think I'm getting it back <laughs> a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He coloured me. He coloured me as a as a moderator real quick, Kenny, just so that he could keep me in tow. <laughs> yeah, well. Yeah. Yeah. Another dang it. <laughs> yeah, I saw. I saw where he he made a couple of your your boys there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. If I one one um somebody else in your panel and your um in your chat too if you want to consider it uh if you need more mods ron tracy tracy is one of the ladies that uh i tell you what she does so many channels it's the one she sleeps that woman and uh yeah she would be a very good mod if you if you're looking yeah, at I, as well i i asked tracy if she would and uh yeah. i think yeah. she's so busy that she said yeah. she well, indeed, she doesn't want to be, so be it. But, um, yeah. yeah, no, but, I mean, yeah. as far as a caliber of a, a person for a mod, she would be excellent. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, I already went, Ron Darrell, though, that I wanted to moderate for his channel. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, need yeah. To, I need to do it with Kenny, too. And, and uh, like I say, I'm just sort of going slow on this thing and learning as I go. And, yeah. But it like, doesn't hurt. It doesn't hurt, Ron, to have you know the extra eyes just helping you in the background anyway. Because, so. uh, yeah, I, especially with, with these crazies that we've been getting lately. Yeah, uh, I, uh, yeah, I will say Tracy's a good one, and also uh, Bree. Uh, yeah. Oh, Bree, yeah, 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 yeah. Certainly, yeah, yeah, yeah. But so. um. No, of the of, of all the, the channels that I sort of keep an eye on, and that Tracy's always in them. So too is a, another woman by the name of Diane Phoenix. She's everywhere as well, honestly. And and Bree, of course, yeah, she's everywhere. And uh, oh, there's 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 quite a few. And you know I, I, I know I know how my eyes just about hang out of my head, and I'm sure that there's a, a worse than mine because. <laughs> Yeah, every and cause I've got the time difference is my excuse, but these people are just everywhere, and how they do it has got me beat. But they do a terrific job. Yeah, yeah I, uh, uh, yeah, I'm always. I, I, I've I've actually I've actually modded four different chats at one time. Uh, no, I don't, I don't see how you do all that, Jenny. <laughs> no, yeah, 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 I can't spread myself that thin, and I've only got my laptop to use. So, yeah, so see, I have two tablets, a laptop, and a phone. So. Yeah, yeah, no. Nah. No, I, I, I struggle with just this thanks and oh I mean I, I'm I'm not that literate with with the uh the computer. I can navigate myself around and what have you, but that's about it. Yeah, anything intricate like yeah, four yeah. sets of eyes on things, no, I couldn't do it. Yeah. Hello, love. Oh well. So I was going to get on here for about 30 minutes, and I think it's been about two and a half hours. <laughs> well, you I'm going to have to like You've had a really good discussion there. Do what? Sounds like you've had a really good, a really good panel to that. <laughs> yeah. So, <clears throat> it's going to take a while. I'm going to have to go back in and, and go up to on that next program. I'm going to run out of time pretty damn quick on this thing. Yeah. All right. Well, I'll, I'll let you go anyway, Ron. And um, But, yeah, look, there, as I said to you earlier, there's so many people in this community that can assist you in your learning curve, and um, and I'm sure they'll be all happy to do it. So, But I, I'm sorry, I don't, it's not me, but I'll, I'm, I'm happy to, yeah, like when I, when I see you come up, 
and that I'll, uh, I'm happy to get in and help mod what you can. Uh, keep. Well, my, my first priority is keeping me in check yeah, so that I can keep the others in check. <laughs> in the chat. I don't I, think a wretch is going to keep you out of trouble. Uh, no, I know. I can't lose <laughs> yeah, I can't help. Nevertheless, um, we keep it clean, so that's the main thing, mostly. Uh, thank you for coming up, Janet. No worries. All right, well, you all have a good night over there. And uh, it will be daytime then now, wouldn't it? Oh, it's 2 o'clock in the morning. Oh, good. Yeah. It's 3.20 three, it's in the morning here. Yeah, I have travel. Well, it's 7.20 here, p.m., yeah, Monday, so... You know, it's so uh, trying to trying to sort of get my mind around the whether it's 15, 16 or 17 hours behind. Yeah, I give up. <laughs> but anyway, everyone have a lovely night. Um, uh, or, and certainly your your Monday. I know mine's my, my day was pretty good here. So hopefully all yours will be too. So cheers from Australia. Yeah, take it easy and look after yourselves. All right, good night. Yeah. Hang on just a minute. I got to let this puppy out. Be right okay. back. Well, guess so. How how is everybody? <laughs> they all got quiet all of a sudden, didn't they? Oh. Uh, But yeah, I um uh... Kenny said he was always in control. That's one yeah. good thing, Tracy, about living in a travel trailer. Really, you don't have to walk very far to get something done. Of course it makes me get fat too, because I, all I gotta do is turn around and open the ice box. So, uh, is that what you live in? Yeah. Is yeah, I've been, you I've been full time for three years, four years, something like that. I've got a, a couple places that sometime I'll go in there and sit for two or three months, you know, that uh, I rent a place for a friend of mine. But I've been in a trailer, for, I guess, four years now. Now, why couldn't you do any monkey business? Just wouldn't have to run as far, Tracy. Are you doing all this on your phone, Kenny? What, moderating? Yeah. Well, I, I, I've got the YouTube chat open on the tablet and I've got I've got it open on my phone. Yeah, I can I can moderate either off the tablet or the phone. Either one. Golly. Yeah. Now going green mom, from what I understand, that's all she ever uses is her phone. She <laughs> does everything from her phone. My fingers are too damn big. I have hell with that phone. But now I, I do the stream yard through the PC. And uh, see, you can't moderate a chat if, if you don't have the YouTube side open of that live stream. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> Yeah, so 
that's the only way because you know and and even when you delete comments the only comment you're going to have uh yeah yes yeah, she 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 she's another good moderator uh, going talking about megan from uh, going green mom that's what i'm talking about yeah she I, that, that's another one i don't see how she does all she does yeah oh, yeah yeah i'd have to learn these programs a whole lot better than they are now to be doing that It, it just like that that last video I posted. It had been so long. It's been about three months since I posted a video, and I done forgot how to cut that, cut them, and and edit them. I had heck with that thing. Finally got it. Working. It really is, Tracy. She, she's amazing. Yeah, and uh, now she will sometimes if she does a live stream herself. Of course, she doesn't hardly ever go live, uh, but she, I think she will go live from her PC. I think, but but she still got. Uh, but I mean, yeah, it, she's she's really good. And uh, like I say, I don't see how she keeps up with everything she does. Of course, I got a lot of other stuff going on. I spend a lot of time on the computer, but I've got some other stuff going on too that keeps me pretty busy. And it, it, the computer completely did away with the, with the television. I bet I have turned this TV on three times in the last six months. Hmm. Yeah, that rate parade is getting big. Yeah, the rate parade, yeah, it's getting huge. Yeah, but it's it, a lot of fun. I have been busy for the last three or four weeks. And I have, haven't watched I need to get back in there and watch it. Well, I'm heading to Courtside on the 17th of January. I'm going to try to leave here the 15th if I can. And uh, But it, it'll take, I can run out there. I could run in one day, I guess. It'd be a long one. But in three days would be about 400 miles a day. I'm about 1,200 miles. So, you know, if you run 400 miles a day, that's three days. So if I leave the 15th, that'll put me in there the 18th. And I'll probably run it in two days. But, uh... Uh, 15th is about as late as you can leave and make the these meet up. Uh, well, see, I... No, I'm talking about out. driving. Yeah, I wanted to get out there for uh, for a glorious slap on wheels meetup. Um, and Lady Bug Out D. Well, I'm, like, gonna, uh, I'm gonna go to D's and dig, and then I've got some more friends that have got another camp down close to Yuma, and I'm gonna go down there for a couple. And, uh, I don't know how long I'll stay out there. There's a couple things I want to do. I want to go to that that desert bar while I'm out there. They claim that's something else. Have you heard about it? No, I, no, I haven't. But I heard that there's a lot. There's a some places to go to in town. Oh yeah. Uh, well, this that desert bar, ten or fifteen miles out in the middle of the desert. And there's no electricity, it's all solar panels, and it's just a bar and a restaurant out there in the middle of that desert. And uh, it's got to really be a big deal. 
last year I was going to go out there, but they were closed. And so I didn't get, not last year, last. Hang on a minute. I got to go get a pup in. Yeah, I, uh, this is going to be my very first time ever out there in Quartzsite. First time ever flying. First time ever going on a cruise. First time ever going to Disney World. Wow. They are. You're going to have a ball out there. Tracy Yuma is nice. It's amazing how different it is. They, they got the channels and stuff there. It's green down there. Big fields. They truck farm down there. It's a whole different place. Yeah, that's what Kenny going to wind up doing. He, he going to keep going to all these places. And he going to wind up putting his own travel agency in. <laughs> well, I, I'm eventually wanting to... I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm eventually wanting to be able to visit all 50 states. Uh uh, I had I had I had a cousin I had a couple of cousins that did that. Uh, they they went on a cruise, and th and they went to every, to all fifty states. That'd be neat. That would be neat. Cause you know I, you only live once, and I I like to be able to see all the fifty states before I'm gone. You know. Yeah. Well, what happens? I've done that, but you go look at them, and then you think, "I want to go back and look at a little bit more in this state. I want to go back and look at a little bit more in that state." And then you wind up going doing it again. Yeah. But. I I'm going to be curious to see how you like the crew. I, I, I have a feeling I'm going to, from what I understand, they're a lot of fun. And, and uh, I, from what I understand, I'm going to be hooked. I'm going to want to go on another one in the near future. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad to see you go do that. I've been on a couple, couple cruises, but I was a lot younger then. And I didn't particularly care for them. Some you people didn't. are No, but that was just me. So, some people are crazy about them. I got some friends of mine that are going on a cruise every month or every two months at least. They'll, they just do it continually. They may go on. Yeah. Six, seven, eight, ten cruises a year. Yeah. Well, I, I know it's, uh, uh, that has to eventually, uh, add up quick. <laughs> Cause I know where Kenny gonna be. He's gonna be out there at that swimming pool. I ball in them good looking women. <laughs> Kenny will come back and get back on live stream and oh eyeballs be plum red from straining. <laughs> I get Kenny laughing here in a minute. <laughs> yeah, they used to run a bunch of cruises out of Galveston. I don't know if they even do that anymore, Tracy. But, uh, 
cruise. The cruises out of Galveston got busted there for a while because it wasn't cruises like the one Kenny's going on. They'd just go out 100 miles, and then the ship turned into a casino. It was all about gambling. And they busted them on that, I think. What states have you been in, Kenny? Well, I've been to, uh, I've been to Branson, Missouri. And, uh, I've been to, um, I've been to Kentucky. Because I have family in Berea, Kentucky. And, um, I've been to Chattanooga, Tennessee. I've also been to Knoxville, Tennessee, and uh, I've I have also been to uh, Greenville, South Carolina. You've been around that part of the country a little bit, then. And uh, and I've been uh, I've been to uh, I've been to Virginia I've I've been into Virginia of course Virginia is not far from Tennessee um, but uh, but yeah I've uh, I I've been to a few states you know I tell you one of those states that surprised me and that was West Virginia man that state. When you first get into it, that's a pretty mm. old mountain. I like mountain, but I like desert too. Um, mm. I, I'm not a big beach person. But I was raised on the coast when I was a kid. Is my volume coming through all right the way I'm talking right now, Kenny? Yeah, you sound loud and clear, brother. Okay. That's it. Sort of quieted down a little bit. Uh, Want to make sure it was still loud enough. Yeah, I hope to eventually get to meet uh, Tracy Ocean Fire seven seven. Seven one day in person. Yeah, you know that's, that's the only bad thing about this. You meet people from all over the world. Uh, that's like Janice. Janice just cracks me up. She's funny. Oh, uh, I, I love her accent. Oh yeah, that, that, that Australian accent. I can listen to it all night. And she doesn't have a real, real heavy one. Now, some some of those Australians have got a heavy accent. And I like Sean's accent as well. Sean from the Down Under Cruisers. From where? Uh, the, the YouTube channel. Uh, Down Under Cruisers. You know who I'm talking about, Sean? Sean and Alana? No, I hadn't hadn't talked to them or been on their channels. I don't think they come and Amy, uh, Sean was up on Amy's tonight. Uh, yeah, I, 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 is, that, is it that Sean is? No, Sean. It's a guy. It's it's he he um um. He's from uh, Australia. He lives in Melbourne, Australia. Mm. And uh, mm. okay. yeah, they help. They help put this cruise together. The, they actually helped come up with a charity called Helping Hands for Cruising to help people like myself or anybody else 
who may uh, never ever get to cruise in their lifetime or whatever, and and for whatever, whether it be for a financial uh, situation or whatever it may be, to be able to help people like myself and others to be able to get on the cruise and to be able to cruise a lifetime. There's a, a guy named Adam Sandoval, and he's a motorcycle guy, and he's got a campground too, but he yeah. he, he does a whole lot of uh, work for the vets, raises a lot of money, and he's putting a cruise on. Yeah. And uh, it, it, sort of, it must be sort of the same deal. For everybody he got signed up for the cruise, they gave him so many dollars that he could take a, a vet with him. So I don't know. I think they got like 150 vets going on that cruise. That's neat. I, I like to see people do stuff. I'm being attacked by a stove here. Got a hold of my shirt sleeve on the plate. <laughs> what kind of dog is it? It's a it's a Boston screw tail. Um, like a little Boston bulldog. Uh sometime you over on my channel, I've got a video of him. The the first video up on that channel. Get a look at it. Yeah. The the rain lives. I used to deer hunt just a few miles from where he lives I'm down south. Texas. His name Rocky. Should have named him Turbo. He goes like a house of fire. Me and him gonna have to have a fight tomorrow or the next day. His little old claws are like needles. He keep my arms cut up all the time. You can't only hold him. I'm just gonna take two people. Hmm. Yeah. Got one dude claw that's like a damn fish. Hook. That, uh, <laughs> well, I wonder if Bree, Bree got all her horses fed tonight. I don't know, but I'd love to be able to see, I'd love to be able to meet her in person one day, Bree. Got to do what? I, I'd like to be able to meet Bree in person one day. Really? Yeah, I would too. Everybody, there's not anybody on here I wouldn't mind meeting. I haven't. Uh, I haven't got to meet Bree. Haven't got to meet Tracy yet either. In person. Get those two in the same room. You love to have your hands full. <laughs> Tracy, where you live? In the Pacific Northwest? I don't think you live somewhere up in there. I tell you what, Oregon surprised me. First time I came, first time I went to Alaska, yeah, well, yeah. I, I come out of Utah up there. I, of course, I've been in West Texas, 
been in New Mexico, which was desert. And I was Arizona, that was desert. And then I turned north and uh, run to Utah. Of course, that was desert. And I got into Oregon, and it was desert. And I always thought of Oregon as being pretty and green and, you know, sort of rainforest type deal. And it is if you get about 50 miles from the ocean. What's the name of that gorge down through there on that river? Crazy. Really? Yeah. I want to go back out there. They got a fish out there that gets huge and urgent. And I had booked a guide out there one time and something happened out of But I'd like to back out there. I think they get up to like 1,800 pounds. You keep the little ones, a six footer, I think it is. Up to six foot, you can keep one. But the, the big fish, you can't even take them out of the water. Dows is what I was thinking of. Yeah. Yeah, that's a pretty country right down through there. There's one place on that gorge we're talking about, and uh, yeah, these, wind, these wind surfers are everywhere out there. I guess that wind always blows down that guard, but not more wind surfers in one spot than I've ever seen. It's amazing the difference in this old country. Uh, if you get just in one state, Good River, Oregon. Yep. There you go. Texas is like that. You can find just about any kind of country you want to see in Texas. From mountains to ocean, forest or desert. Depending on which way you want to go. Yeah. Some of, some of Texas is ugly to me. It's just rolling hills, you know. Y'all gonna, yeah. gonna get any snow over there? We don't get we we'll get snow where I live about every three or four years. We might get just a little bit. Not, we don't hardly get any snow. You hardly get any. Mm -hmm. Now you go go north of here. Or if you get up around Amarillo, where Amy's at, now they get snow up there quite. There's, there's, uh, and then the Guadalupe Mountains close to El Paso, they're about 7,000, 7, 8,000 feet tall. They get some snow. Uh oh. I'd like to get some rain. Yeah, we were talking about we were talking about last year's never seen snow. Yeah, plenty of it last year. She's in the Philippines. Oh yeah, uh, they ain't got no snow over there. Yeah, she's in the she's in the, she's in the Philippines. And she's she's never seen snow. When I went up north and started pulling them RVs, I never had seen a snow shovel. I didn't know what one looked like. They, uh, I saw all the snow up there in that two years I ever went. My 
internet was buffering real bad. And Verizon, I got a Verizon hotspot, and Verizon got hold of me and said they had a recall on that hotspot that it was blowing the battery. And I got that new hotspot in, and I had many trouble with uh, with it buffering since then. You know, I guess that hotspot made a lot of difference. Yeah, well, it just says if it, it is the rainy season, though, this time around, Tracy, but uh, each year it gets worse and like, it keeps raining hard unlike before. We've had some crazy weather in the state in the last couple of years. That's a bad deal about all them fires up there in Colorado, Kansas. I can't imagine trying to fight a fire with 80 mile an hour wind. I was reading one time, you'd appreciate this, Kenny. What's that? Uh, Back in the 1800s, they had a forest fire that started on the banks of the Mississippi River. Yeah. And that fire got, of course, they didn't have any way to put them out back then, you know. And that yeah. fire got 200 miles wide and 50 miles deep. And it burned all the way from the Mississippi River to the Pacific Ocean in California. Never mm -hmm. did go up. That'd be huge. Wow. Yeah, that, that last time I saw anything on that, Tracy, they said that, that around Denver it was, what, 900 homes that burned up already? Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Quit yawning. Yeah. You gonna make me get sleep. <laughs> yeah. Well, I've got to get up here in the next couple couple hours. Got to get ready to get on V's here. She's going oh. live at six forty-five. I am not a morning person. I stay up late, but I don't like it early in the morning. Huh. What? what, what is, <laughs> uh, B just cracked me up. She's funny. I get to meet her on the cruise. Something else. Well, listen, folks, I think I'm fixing to shut this thing down and see if I can get a little bit of sleep, too. Just about 3 o'clock. Yeah, it's here. about it's about 4 o'clock here in my time. You're, you're an hour behind me. Yeah. If I do sleep, I'll get about maybe two hours because she comes on at 6.45, so... Well, Kenny, I appreciate all the help. Oh, you're welcome here. You're welcome anytime. Uh, I'm I'm willing to help, and because uh, I, I love the community, and looking forward to meet many more of you in the, in in this new year. Looking for good positive vibes in the year of uh, 2022, and uh, yeah. Same with me. We're going to have a good year this year. Um, 
And um, I guess one of my main goals is to work on a better, better, uh, healthier lifestyle because I do need to work on losing some weight here. Tell me about it. So, yeah. We won't talk about losing weight too much. <laughs> like, like I say, this, this damn travel trailer don't help that. Because just, I can just turn around. I've got an office chair up next to this. And I can just turn around in this office chair and reach the icebox. So, snack all night long. Yeah. Good night, DJ. Good night, Bree. Good night, Tracy. Good night, everyone in the chat. Good night, Mojo. And. Y'all have a good night. We'll see y'all. Kenny again. Thank you. All right. You're very welcome. Bye-bye. Thanks.